Brother Galen said, it is so good to see each of you out this morning, especially our visitors. We always count it a blessing when we have visitors among us. I'll offer, as I always do, except last week I forgot, if nobody noticed, but I'll offer a challenge to anyone who is visiting with us and may not be familiar with the Church of Christ and how we conduct our worship services and how we look at God's Word for our authority. We just very simply challenge you. Ask us why, and we will provide for you a Bible answer for all that we do and all that we say. A topic in my mind, and Brother Paul read for us, and that should say there's verse 13, not verse 14 through 14. He read for us something that I think is very important. And we look at our world today and the society in which we live. And we talk about all the evil and all of the things that are going on. Let me suggest to you that the foundational problem is the lack of the Bible in the home. And so when I think about the Bible this morning, too often you and I and even those in the world today, they take for granted how easy it is for us to access the Scripture. And yes, I have some personal notes up there in my office, on the shelf, many of which have never come off the shelf. But there are over 20 different versions of God's Word. And I should rephrase that and put translations of God's Word. Because there's really only one version of God's Word. But on my computer, again, more than 20 different versions. And then on my iPad and on my phone, I've downloaded 25. And someone says, Brother Ray, why do you have so many on there? The reason I have so many different translations of God's Word is, is because each one to me serves a purpose. They each can help us understand maybe a little bit better what one word that we might not understand in one is, is in another. So I challenge you to have more than just the King James Version. Or maybe more than just the New King James Version or whatever your favorite one is. Open up and look at more than just one of those translations. But you know it's great for me to have all those on my shelf, isn't it? It's great for me to have all those at my fingertips. But what good does it do me if I don't ever use any of them? What good does it if I don't look at those and I don't see what God wants me to do? You see, in too many cases, I think this is too uh, happens far too often. Oftentimes, the Bible is only referenced in relation to activities that go on in the church. And I think that might be the problem we have in our society. You know, the study of the Bible, in reality, don't, would you agree with me that it needs to be an integral part of our daily life? If we think about the Bible in the home and what all it means, then what we need to understand are some principles about Bible study. Number one, God has always wanted His Word studied. And he's always wanted his word talked about in the home. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 18 and look at verse 19. There Moses, as he records for us, writes these words. He says, For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring Abraham what he has spoken him. Moses, what do you mean in that passage when you say that they keep the way of the Lord? Well, let me ask you a simple question. How are you going to know what God expects of you and how he requires you to live if you never look at the guide that he has given you to live life. Let's illustrate it another way. 
when you buy a new car. Some of you probably never set the clock. Maybe you just leave it where it is after the dealership sets it for you that first time. But suppose you wanted to learn how to change the clock so it would read the right time when the time changes, which I hope it stops changing, by the way. How would you learn how to do that? <coughs> if you never looked at the instruction manual, you would never know how to do it. You, you would not know how to, to change the clock, or you wouldn't know how to do numerous other things that your car does these days if you didn't look at the owner's name. And so the same principle is true in scriptures. What was it that God wanted his people to know? Go back to the Old Testament. Would you agree he wanted them to know about the plagues? Do you think he wanted them to know about the plague so they might, that they might understand his great power and how truly he is a supreme God over all the other false gods that this world has to offer? Or how about the Passover? You see, brethren, if we don't go back and understand what the Passover was all about, will we really understand what the Lord's Supper is about? You see, that principle of learning the things of old help us understand the things of the new. Or how about the Ten Commandments? Oh, Brother Ray, we don't live under the Ten Commandments today. We don't need to know those. Really. Nine out of the ten are, are repeated by Jesus. And the tenth one is there in principle. And when you look at the Ten Commandments, I hope you will agree with me that they are a great foundational principle for moral principles in our world today. They teach us how that we ought to love God and what He has done for us. And they teach us how that we ought to treat one another. Great foundation for us in our society. Maybe one you've never thought of very often. But how about the memorial stones that were laid as the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River into the land of Canaan? What was the purpose of those? What is the purpose of these things? They are all there to bring to the remembrance of the people how God has blessed them. But if you never open your Bible and you don't study your Bible, you'll never know about those things. And you'll never understand how God continues to bless us even to this very day. You see... I suggest to you that they are not only to be discussed during quote-unquote special religious events or quote-unquote special religious services that some folks have, but they were to be discussed every day during ordinary conversation. When I go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6 down through verse 9, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what that passage says as it tells us when we should be teaching our children, when we should be teaching those who are watching us and following us around. As we walk down the pathway, as we lay our heads down at night, the whole passage deals with the premise is that every opportunity we have to teach the Scriptures, we ought to take advantage of that time. Amen. There is never a moment in time when teaching God's Word is not convenient. Look at life. Life's lessons. We can teach so much about that. So I ask the question at the end, what example do we set if we restrict discussion to set times? When you go on, number two, I believe the Bible or the home is the primary place of biblical instruction. Did you get that? The home is to be the primary place where the Bible is taught. The things that happen in a congregation and the activities that we do, Bible class, vacation Bible school, worship, those things ought to be a supplement to what is being taught in the home. Let me ask you a question. And I'll challenge you again. And after services, I'll be right over here. Well, I might be in the middle, but I'll be in the back. I want someone to dig into the Bible and you find for me the very passage 
in which God has turned the teaching function of the home over to the church. And I'll be waiting till the cows come home. I, I, I can wait out there all day and all night and all day tomorrow and all week till we come back next Sunday. And there's no one in this assembly this morning that will ever find that passage because it does not exist. Brethren, as parents, as aunts, as uncles, as grandparents, we in the home have that responsibility. Turn to Proverbs 22. And look at verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. The wise writer says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. What does that mean? What does that really mean? Have you really thought about that in, in context with the Bible being presented in the home? Brethren, if you lay the foundation that's right for your child in the home, they may depart, but they will always remember what has been taught to them. I think about our own life. I think about some of us who at one point in life we know what the Bible has taught, yet we made a choice to turn away. We made a choice to leave. But I'm so thankful that so many have remembered those principles from youth and they have turned back and become faithful members of the Lord's church. That's not saying that they will never fall away. It's saying if they do, they'll remember. Or how about Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 4? Perhaps we know that one. Ephesians 6 verse 4. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training or nurture and admonition of the Lord. What does it mean to provoke them under wrath? What is, what is Paul saying when he says that we as fathers ought to provoke our children, not provoke our children under wrath, but to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? Our responsibility is to not push them into the world. Our responsibility is to draw closer to God. And when we fail to teach the Bible in the home, what are we doing? Are we not pushing them closer to to the world. If you don't teach your children the Bible in the home, trust me, trust me, the world will teach them that which you do not want them to learn. Amen. Young people are looking for instruction. I know somebody said, Brother Ray, young people today, they don't want any instruction. Yes, they do. They want us to be parents, not friends. Amen. You might say, Brother Ray, you're nuts. My kid wants me to be their friend. No. I've talked to enough young people in my days to, to understand they want you to teach them. They want you to discipline them. But we as parents are the failure. Yes, I'm talking to myself. Amen. Wait a minute. Now that wasn't nice. <laughs> I have not had perfect children. I feel like sometimes I did fail. But then I have to remember the foundation was laid. The foundation was laid. And guess what? They're back. Success. Success! And I don't just have to talk about my own children. I can talk about all the other foster children, all my adopted kids that, that I've known through the years, through Bible camp, through Horizons, through sports. I mean, I got two of my daughters back here sitting this morning visiting with us. But brethren, when we fail to lay the principle of the Bible, the primary responsibility, as the screen says, falls to follow. Fathers. Anybody see the correlation to what I just said? 
Where are our fathers in the home today? Where are our fathers in the home today? How many single parent homes are there in the world today? Do you understand the problem and the correlation here now? You understand why maybe the Bible is, is being forsaken? It's because we as fathers have pushed off our spiritual responsibility to the wife, Amen. to the mother, Amen. and even to the church. Amen. There is this widespread abandon by fathers. And I find that to be very sad. Too often it says, well, I, I just don't have time. But I really say it's because you don't have the inclination or you're just too lazy to do this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Maybe we as fathers don't want to teach our children because we're afraid we'll turn them away from us. We're afraid we'll discourage them. Maybe we're afraid that if we push too much, they'll turn away from faithfulness. I, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing things out. But I understand that the Bible has to be that primary place where Scripture is taught. But understand something. But more than being a place where the contents of the Bible are to be learned, the home is the ideal place for the truth of the Bible to be learned in real life and in real situations. <laughs> Home is where we most often pass beyond knowing the truths of the Bible to knowing that they are true at the practical level. You know, I think about Bible class that we have here at South Jackson. If you want the in-depth theological side, go to Chip's class. Nothing against you, Chip. I love you. But if you come in my class, I try to give you the practical side. And those are practical truths that I began to learn when I was just a young man. Don't you think about it. Chip gives practical advice too. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But brother, we must look at these things. Because home is where we most often learn the truths of God's Word. Where is it when a young child, a young person begins to talk about baptism. Who do they bring it up to? Is it not mom and dad? And let me ask you a question, mom and dad. If you don't know how to answer that question, what do you do? Well, let's go talk to the preacher. You as a parent ought to be able to explain to them why they need to be baptized. You shouldn't pass that responsibility off to the preacher or, or Bible class teacher or one of the other men. You as a parent ought to be answering that question. Why can't you? Now, I'm not answering that. I don't want to get in hot water. Brother, understand that the home is where we begin to learn. It's where they are not only taught, but they're modeled. They're illustrated. They're that which is brought to life. And so by keeping the Bible at the periphery of our whole life, we miss many of the valuable teaching and learning opportunities presented by the situations that arise daily. That goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through verse 9. When we look at the Bible on this periphery thing, this, this on the outskirts, something that, well, you know, I know it's over there and I can always turn to it when I need it. It's the wrong attitude. It ought to be in the center of our lives that we can explore, that we can dig into when there's a situation. We can go to the Bible and say, you know, something similar will happen in the Bible like that. Look how they react. Was it pleasing to God? Was it displeasing to God? I, I, I can go on and on about this. But brother, the Bible is important. And it must start at home. So what do we do? 
What do we do? Putting the Bible at the center of our homes. These are practical suggestions. Number one, make sure every member of your household has their very own copy of the Bible. Don't share. Wednesday night, I was proud. He's sleeping, so he won't even hear me. <laughs> Wednesday night, he came to me and said, Papa, my Bible. My Bible. And think about that. Can he read? Nope. But guess what? He got a Bible. Can he look at pictures like I can? I can't read either, by the way. He can look at pictures. He can see the illustrations. Is that important? One of these days, he'll have 20 different Bibles because I'm leaving them all to him. Well, he's only going to get 10. <laughs> I forgot about the, you know, the new one. He gets 10 too. Or maybe somebody said, Brother Ray, just go buy 20 more and then give each of you 20. That way they'll have the same collection. Give everybody a Bible, from the youngest to the oldest. And my suggestion would be make sure that you get the same translation for everyone so when you sit down to study the Bible, you're all reading the same thing. And you can discuss it better. Have a plan to educate your family. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Make a plan. Or make it a priority to take the Bible out of that special quote compartment we have kept it in and involve it in the, the everyday activity, you know, the routine activities of life. What is the compartment you keep your Bible in? Read and study the Bible every day as individuals. When I think about the compartment, I think about Folks who on the way to services say, oh, I didn't get my Bible class for today. Well, that's okay. Brother Ray will have us a cheat sheet. We ain't doing no more cheat sheets, folks. No more cheat sheets. I've made it too easy for you on Wednesday nights and even sometimes on Sunday morning. Now you got to dig in and get your own lesson, don't you? Let me tell you something. I think our classes are better when we have open discussion about what we're studying. Why? Because I think we learn more. So no more cheap seats. Which puts responsibility on you to plan ahead and get your lessons done. Yeah, but Brother Ray, you know, I'm so busy, I just don't have time.